When the government soldiers came and attacked our village, they killed many people. So I had to seek shelter in Ethiopia. There was no transport. We used to eat leaves from trees and meat that we hunted. We walked for three months, and for the first time in our lives we had no bread. We slept in a forest full of mosquitoes. Most dramatically though, local people killed some of us. There is a war, a war that has lasted for almost 20 years and has cost three million lives. It is a war of contrasts, Arab against black, Muslim against Christian, North against South. It is a war fought on many fronts, from the battlefields of the southern swamps to the Islamic re-education schools in Khartoum. It is a war in which international interests hang in the balance, whilst people confront famine, slavery and death. It is a war shrouded in a veil of silence. Sudan is the largest country in Africa, with a total population of 35 million people. Pyramids attest to a history stretching back to a time when the pharaohs made Sudan their home. It is also a Christian history, evidence of which can be traced right up to the 16th century, although Arab influence, at least in the north, has been prevalent for almost seven centuries. Politically, Sudan, a former British colony, gained independence in 1956, only to plunge into a civil war. The Khartoum government, forced by growing radical fundamentalist movements from neighboring Islamic countries, modified the nation's law in accordance with Islamic law and introduced the Sharia against the wishes of Africans in the south. Sudan was not originally an Islamic country. Sudan becomes an Islamic country now because Muslims are the majority. The North would like to have the South, but without the Southerners. And of course, cultural differences greatly differentiate the North from the South. People with Arab cultural roots consider themselves of a higher race than the Africans. The people of the south, they don't want the north, the northern uh, style of life, the northern uh, cultural identity, political identity, religious identity be flown into the south. The south would like to be free. The war has claimed the lives of three million Sudanese. Almost half the population in the south is widows. The heavy recruitment of able men has brought about an almost complete crop failure. Child labor is not only common but essential if the remaining crops are to be harvested. There is no hope of an education and the threat of famine is ever present. My sister's husband was killed and he left her with four children. So now I have to take care of all of them. Altogether, we are 14 people. The little money I get from part-time work is only enough for food, nothing else. Many are keen to argue that the war in Sudan is a religious conflict between the North and the South. 
between Muslims and Christians. One can simultaneously argue both that yes it is and no it is not. Sudan is thought to have oil reserves similar to those of Saudi Arabia. The fact that most of that oil lies in the middle and south of the country makes it a potential resource for both the north and south. Bombing strategies based on religious and ethnic priorities have now been replaced by an economic cleansing of populations in the oil-rich areas. Huge amounts of oil has been found in the Sudan. And all calculation is being made in terms of the oil. Not in terms of the dignity of the people who are there, not in terms of the future of the people who are there. I suppose because our lives do not matter. Many nations, even the European nations, are beginning to align themselves more with the government because of the oil. And in that way, they are declaring themselves against the Southern Sudanese. And so they are going to defend the, the oil. They will bring arms, even in a hidden way. Because of the oil under the ground, we will destroy everybody on the surface. Perhaps the most devastating effect of the escalating war is the overwhelming flight of refugees. In 10 years, over 5 million southern Sudanese have been internally displaced and a further 200,000 have fled to neighboring countries. Refugees walk with only what they can carry for days to escape that ever-widening arena of war. And if they run, where will they go? Will there be food? Will there be water? Will there be medicine for their children? They no longer have the right to any land. They don't have the right or the ownership of a house. Um, they no longer have any belongings of, of their own. Uh, the fruit of their labor has been robbed from them. They, they have lost their crops. Because of famine and war, almost three million people from the south now live in the capital. The population of Greater Khartoum, the biggest city in the country, has swelled to about six million and relief agencies estimate that over a thousand new refugees arrive each day. The regime has divided the refugee population into four large camps outside the city. Reasons of war brought me to Khartoum. My father died, so I was left alone, a young girl with younger brothers. I decided to escape with the others when our village was destroyed. We walked. 